After three videos on WebSockets with Spring Boot, today we start building a web chat application. In this first video, we create a new Spring Boot application configure WebSockets in Spring Boot and connect the first users. Let us first briefly go over the result so you have an idea what to expect in this video. I launched the application in Eclipse and opened it in three browser windows. As you can see there are no members online and no messages in the list. If I log into the first window under my own name, the confirmation that I am online comes and in the list of messages comes a new message. Then I log into the second window with a new user. You see different things happening in the user lists and the message lists of the two browser windows. Finally I log into the third window with a new user, you can see back that all the lists are updated. If I close the second user it disappears from the list and a message appears in the message lists. Also when I close a window the user is logged off nicely. Now let's switch to Eclipse and go over all the code. As usual in our videos, we start with the POM XML file. The latest version of Spring Boot when recording the video is 3.1.3. .3. And the Java version we are using is 17. We further have the following dependencies. Spring Boot Starter Web Spring Boot Starter Timeleaf and Spring Boot Starter WebSocket. We also always have the Spring Boot Starter test but we don't use it in these videos. The first class is the default main class. The next class is the WebSocket Message Broker Configurer. Here we configure the basic WebSocket endpoints for our application. Topic app and spring boot tutorial then we move on to one of the two controller classes the chat controller is where all websocket communication happens we start with the member store this is a bean that we use to store all the members that are online more info on the member store later the Simp Messaging Template is a WebSocket class that we use to send messages. We use Constructor Dependency Injection to make the dependencies available in this class. The endpoint we use in this video is to connect, store a user, and to send messages. First we create a new user, pass it with the session attributes, and store the user in the member store. Then we send all users that are online to the topic user's endpoint and send a message to the topic message's endpoint. Furthermore, we have two event listeners. The handle session connect event you can use when connecting a user. The handle session disconnect event we use to disconnect a user. First we remove the user from the session attributes and remove this user from the member store. Then we send the list of users from the member store to the topic user's endpoint. And finally we send a message to the topic message's endpoint. The web controller has a simple method to make the index.html file available. We use the member store service class to store the users who are online. For those who want this you could also use database logic here. Furthermore, there is action enum class. With joined, commented, and left. The last two are records. User with the fields ID and username. And message with the fields. User, comment, action, and timestamp. These are all the classes for the backhand part, we can now move on to the frontend part of the application. For the frontend part, 
we start with the index HTML file. We have four sections here. The header with the title of the application. The form to connect and exit the user. The user list. And the messages list. The most important file is the main JavaScript file. In the first part all the constants, classes, and variables are configured. In document add event listener all variables are further configured. The window add event listener we use to exit the users nicely when closing the browser window. The connect and disconnect functions are used in combination with the buttons on the index HTML file. The three client functions are used in combination with the stomp JavaScript code. In onConnect we create a new user and subscribe to the topic URL and the user URL and publish to the app user endpoint of the backhand. Further there are two error functions. Further we have set connected show messages list show users has only letters and numbers and finally uuid v4 function the last file is the style css file i am going to show this briefly but not explain further the emphasis in this video is on spring boot and javascript and not css that's it for this video. In the next video we will continue with our application. We are then going to send public messages, these are messages that everyone can read and responds to it. Thanks for following the video to the end and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.